Hello there. Um, today we're working on an, uh, a low HF225 uh, that I have had now for quite a wee while. Um, this radio is actually multi-faulted uh, with all sorts of pr problems and I've spent hours on it. Gradually things ha are improving. Uh, we're getting somewhere with it slowly but surely, uh, but more slowly than surely. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Um, initially we found that the uh, 8 volt regulator was no longer an 8 volt regulator, it was given out round about uh, nearly 9 volts. Um, so as a, a, a low loss type, uh, but I just put a standard uh, 7808 in it, that's fine. Uh, it's never going to be running batteries, so there we go. Um, next thing we found was quite a number of electrolytic capacitors had failed. Uh, this one, this one, this one, these two down here on the 6 volt regulator stage uh, for the uh, the local oscillator, you'll notice the can's off at the moment. Um, and we also had problems with this chip and I believe there was another one, I can't remember now which one it was, I think it was this one of these, I don't think it was that one. These were faulty, these, were, these had obviously been fried. Initially it would work <coughs> somewhat above about 18 megahertz um, that wouldn't operate below and looking at the out output from the uh, the local oscillator you could see <coughs> if you went up and down the one meg steps it was going up and down fine but once it hit a certain point it wasn't worse so the PLL uh, hasn't been running properly um, the TD, TDD 1724, I think it's a 1724, um, produces <coughs> a carrier, an RF, which is actually detected by, well, not detected, it's actually rectified by a couple of diodes, I think it's these two here, and uh, there is a resultant voltage from that that goes into the, the regulator and also up to here, but it's high. Um, we were having problems down here, we should have 6.1 volts on the emitter of this regulator but in actual fact we've got 6.6 .6 and it's quite critical. <clears throat> Initially it was about 7 volts and the two capacitors and the transistor, each thing brought it down marginally but changing the three brought it down to 6.6 .6. um, but as I say this output from here is high from one that shouldn't be high and there's no reason that's not really controlled by anything <clears throat> it's just the internal circuitry of the chip so I, I think the chip has also been damaged by the high the, the high voltage from this regulator so why all this has happened I have no idea um, it makes me think by the number of capacitors I've had to replace is it's not had 12 volts on here on the DC input maximum 16 but it's probably had 24 volts. Uh, it's not fried the audio output, which I was quite surprised, but quite possibly it wouldn't. Uh, it's more likely to go to more sensitive components. So, as I say, we are getting there. Um, I have a sneaky feeling the J310 uh, FET could be faulty, but again, trying to get a good J310s these days is like uh, finding a needle in the haystack. Most of them are fakes. Uh, there is a, a surface mount, one available with a wee adapter, but that's going to add extra capacitance into this particularly sensitive local oscillator circuit. So I'd rather get a genuine J310 or J310. Now you'll be wondering why this resistor's here. As I say, this voltage is a bit high, and the voltage that comes into this circuit uh, should be to minus two point, uh, sorry, minus one point three, I think it is, or something. I can't, I can't remember offhand. I need to get a diagram back out. But let's assume it's, it's minus one point three. It's actually one volt negative too high because the output from this is too high, right? So all this is doing is dropping that voltage down uh, to roughly within the specification that this run, runs at, and that has actually <clears throat> brought the oscillator uh, down to working at 12 megahertz um, so and it's it's rock steady it's stable as soon as, it, as soon as it gets to 12 megahertz it goes out of lock and the out of lock a uh, uh, level on the chip comes up and it mutes the radio the audio is muted which it's supposed to do so that's fine but uh, I think we're talking about replacing this 
I think if we replace this, we probably will have a, a working radio. Cost us a few quid so far because a lot of these chips are just not available anymore. You just cannot get them for the HF 225. Um, and I've been very fortunate. Uh, I think one of the chips cost me about uh, 15 quid. And there was another one that was about nine. Uh, and all the other so uh, other other rods and sods that I've fitted. Okay, low value components, admittedly, but a lot of work, a lot of hours has gone into this so far, and it's still not right. But it does work. It works fine. Uh, above 12. Is it around uh, 10 metres today or not? Not sure. Well, it's AM there, I think, for some reason. Birdies there, that might, that might be me with this. No, it's coming in, it might be coming. Oh, it sounded like it. That sounds like a little side mod. Not AM anyway. Hmm, that's odd. Probably from my heater, the heater boosts are quite a bit of noise. As you can see, all the functions are there, uh, and the radio does work uh, above, as I say, 12 big hertz. I think it's 12. Let's see. I'll show you what happens when you go below it. Nah, 13. Don't know where it stops. You get an effect as it, as it gets to the edge. Lock now and it mutes. There you go, and then the S meter goes up. So, there you go, that's what it's doing. Anyway, I thought I'd let you see that. Uh, as I say, it's uh, nice radios when they're going. I've got a couple of disadvantages. You mean you're, you move it on the bench, and this this the uh, sticky bit that goes in front of the panel gets caught, and it and you get this bubble effect. Uh, I should be able to run some uh, contact adhesive in behind it, that might cure it, but it's just. Sometimes low stuff is good. It's good when it's working. But I've had experience with them in the past. And when they're not working, they can be a right pain to fix. And things like this, uh, <laughs> it's poor design. They should have uh, some beading around here or something like that. So this can't get caught on a bench when you're working with it upside down. Uh, it's just trimmed along here, which... And inevitably, you can actually feel the ridge that is slightly higher than the alloy of the front fascia. So, for the cost of the radios as they were, these are these are. You might think it's minor. It's not minor, um, and I, and I feel that at the time they could have got it right. Anyway, uh, well, hopefully we'll persevere with it and get it going. Um, <laughs> uh, and good luck to anybody else that's got these kind of faults because they're a lot of work. And uh, the parts are difficult now, very difficult. Some of the chips are just no longer available. And fortunately, I've been able to uh, get some good sources where I've got the chips and going from there. Anyway, there's a TDD uh, 1742, I think it's our 1724, whatever it might be, is on order. 
Uh, I've got a couple of them coming, so uh, uh, we'll cut that one out. We'll just what we do. I always cut the legs off uh, with a with a, a nice, a good sharp uh, new blade in my Stanley knife, uh, and wipe the the pins off, and then uh, drop the the new chip on with the flux, and uh, uh, that's the way I do it as well. Uh, and even the board quality on them is not wonderful. The, the print on them is not great. So anyway, so much for the moans. But as I say, when they're working, they are good. They, yeah, they're, they're hard to beat. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Everybody take care. All the very best.